Hey everyone, welcome back to OTD Military History. Today we are doing a AMA, or Ask Me Anything, on the Battle of Vimy Ridge. Thanks everyone for coming and hanging out. I've got some questions already to go uh, from people on Twitter and from, from YouTube posts from a few days ago. Uh, if you're new to the channel and you don't know who I am, and that might matter a little bit as to why you would wonder why should I believe anything, this guy says, uh, my name is Brad St. I have a PhD in military history from the University of Ottawa. I focused my dissertation on the Battle of Hong Kong, but I've been studying Canadian military history broadly now for quite some time. I've done all kinds of writing, academic, public, social media, making videos on YouTube, obviously. So I have quite an extensive experience in military history, tons of archival research, and have done good chunk of work on Vimy Ridge, presented a paper actually at a conference on why, you can see it on the hat here and I'll get to the hat in a bit because I normally don't wear hats <laughs> on streams, um, on the memorial itself, right on the memorial itself and why it is literally on Hill 145 at Vimy Ridge. So thanks everyone for coming out, Jason, uh, Scott, Wayne, Marks and Sparks, everyone else watching, Sheila, thank you for everything and all the YouTube channel members and patrons here joining us today. So uh, I basically just screenshotted the questions like I've done in the past. So we'll just get going with this. So this one I wanted to start off just generally. Um, those of you who know have been with the channel for a while. One of the, I think, the first live stream ever was with Carla Jean Stokes about Vimy Ridge um, two years ago now, roughly around this time. So that was awesome. So anyway, so I've been talking about this for quite some time. And uh, those of you who know me and know my work here on YouTube, especially know myths, uh, particularly those about Vimy Ridge, kind of drive me a little crazy. Um, so when I got this question from, from Small Badger, I don't know if you're working. Um, um, or sorry, if you're watching, I'm working. <laughs> sorry, I've seen the... Uh, uh, comments and get distracted and another thing you'll probably learn about me um is just about debunking the myths and i said of course that is kind of what i hope to do with this anyway obviously can't cover everything uh, but i will do my best to cover as many as i can questions on the side uh the ones i already have uh going forward so <laughs> yes i i do lots of archival research at, at lac especially library and archives canada war museum that one well, I can do the CF100 um, better probably than the 103. Um, but if you're serious, I can't help you out if you do need help. I can I can do that. If a joke, um, yeah, there's probably a lot. <laughs> um, so I just want to say hi. Uh, JD, thanks for coming out and supporting the channel as of late. Uh, I really appreciate it. And Andreas, who's always good supporter of the channel, thank you for popping in and hanging out. Um, where did Scott's comment go? Quit that. Okay, yes. So hold on, I'll just put this back on me for a second. So this is, yeah, a hat I've had for a while now. Um, got it from my parents way back when for Christmas. Um, so the thing, sorry, mirrored, is the problem with why I don't really wear it much is this. This is one of the biggest myths. I mean, it's a question that will come up, but I just want to address this now. And I made my hat here, which is always kind of crazy. As a lot of you probably already know, of course. So I'll probably just keep it on the whole live stream. Uh, is this part, the birth of the nation part. The rest of it's actually kind of cool. we got the memorial poppy, and which I really like actually on the back is the four colors of the four divisions, which I think is pretty awesome. It's just this birth of the nation part that drives me a bit crazy because I just don't believe that that's true in the slightest. Uh, anyway, so that's one of the myths that I will get into um, today, and nothing new. Uh, yeah, that's nothing new. So uh, hold on here. Let me pull up one of the questions. So what do you think was most decisive? This is from Ian on Twitter. Um, the most decisive. Uh, so there we go. Better uh, yeah, in the battle and lore. Battle prepped and rehearsed infantry, well-timed and planned artillery. Um, might not come as a shock to many of you who watched the live stream the other day with, with Dave Gripstad is I think the artillery is most decisive for all kinds of reasons. Obviously, I'm not belittling the infantry because the infantry has a critical role to play at Vimy particularly and particularly at other parts of the battlefield. I mean, obviously all over. Um, and I have some maps and stuff pulled up that we can get to if we need it. Um, 
and the artillery barrage as well, which was part of that live stream, which is also cool. Um, I think it, it plays a huge role because it, it prepares the battlefield. I think literally as I logged on here, there's discussion from, from Dave and some others about when battles actually start. You know, should we push back the start dates of battles to the prep? And I, But I think in terms of artillery for Vimy Ridge, it's why Vimy is so successful. A, it's the a large amount of planning that goes into this. I mean, the planning goes on and on and on and on for a long time. That plays a huge role in this and the training and all of that. But, you know, preparing this battlefield with the artillery. Um, and there's Dave there now <laughs> talking about what I was just literally talking about two seconds ago. Um, yeah, it's, it, 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 I think it plays that huge role. I mean, obviously there there's all kinds of that, but if you want to say most decisive, is artillery. I mean, I, I think it's also in terms of the myths and everything, because one of the smaller myths that's also that floats around a lot, and I think education in Canada particularly has a role to play in this, is um, the you know the creeping barrage. People claim that it's been by Canadians. It's not. Um, first time being used here, it's not. Um, but it, it's part of it, and I think that plays a part into the to lore, as, as Ian has asked on Twitter. So I think that that's a really interesting part of that uh, whole discussion um, of what's going on here and, and, and what's most important in terms of, like, particularly the lore. I think the artillery plays a huge role uh, like that. Um, so, yeah, so hopefully that answers your question there, Ian. Wrong screen. Okay, I think this one was a bit of a joke. I'm sorry, I'm trying to. I was going to make them all separate images, but I decided, eh, screw it. <laughs> um, I think this is a bit of a joke, but it, it, there's nuance to all of this, obviously. But the myth about Vimy being this Canadian defining moment, and that 40% of Canadian Corps not being Canadian. Um, again, there's an issue with, I take an issue with that as well, because what is it to be Canadian? What does that mean? Um, oh, hey, Barry, thanks for joining us. Um, what does that even mean at the time? It's not the same definition as what is to Canadian today. Um, there, that's a little bit better. Uh, it's not the same thing as a, at the same time. At the, sorry, at the time of the, the battle itself, and that obviously changes as the war goes on after the war and as people reflect on the battle afterwards. So, I mean, there's that part of it when people are very specific and trying to push that myth of this is Canada blah, 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 all of that and everything. Um, it, it, it does, it throws a wrinkle into that if that is something that people are trying to push, which people do, um, and what that means, right? A lot of them are mostly British-born. Uh, Canadian Corps is mostly British-born at that point. That only really starts to change at the end of the war. Uh, but again, how do those people identify and what do they think of themselves? Do they think they're Canadian? Some could think they were Canadian, only being say, immigrating from Britain and but living in Canada for maybe a decade, maybe more, maybe less. I don't know. It, it, it's a complicated thing. But of course, that plays into this. Um, plays into all of this is identity uh, and, and all of that. I mean, the hat already, you know, the birth of the nation thing, right? It, it throws a wrench into whole, all of that. And I, I think that's something to keep in mind for all of this moving forward. Uh, and I see questions are coming on the side. Uh, I'm just going to, Dave's is a bit uh, <laughs> tongue in cheek there, but uh, I will get to them as well, or I might jump in back and forth depending on how they come rolling in. So of course, don't uh, don't hold up with your questions, fire away, and I will get to all of them probably with the amount of time I have. Okay, so this one's the next one from Heather, another supporter of the channel. Uh, what is the most, what do you feel is the most damaging myth about Vimy? Uh, this one. Sorry, am I turning the right way? No, it's always mirrored. This one, the, let's do it this way. The birth of a nation myth is definitely the most damaging myth about the Battle of Vimy Ridge. Uh, wholeheartedly, I don't think that's really up for debate. Sorry, I keep looking at the hat. I don't think you can tell I don't wear it very often. <laughs> um, I think that's the most damaging one uh, for all kinds of reasons. I mean, it's most damaging in the sense that I don't think Canada was born on the slopes of Vimy Ridge. That just discounts a huge chunk of um, uh, of the Canadian population at the time who are not at Vimy, who are not even in the CEF. I mean, that just belittles them completely. Uh, it takes away from the overall experience that is the war. Uh, it takes away from, uh, in some cases, I mean, this is not people's intention probably, but some of the other sacrifices made during the war. 
uh, it takes away from that. Um, all of that. It, 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 it's really uh, an interesting way of thinking about it, though, is, is, yes, of course, Canada and a lot of, sorry, other nations have these defining moments. I don't think Canada really does. Somewhat of a Canadian thing. I think this is a defining thing is we're not really sure where this kind of whole concept comes from, because we're not even sure what the concept of Canadian even is to this day. I would argue a lot of us can't define that um, other than people born or living within the borders of Canada. Um, yeah, so I, I think that is the most damaging myth, is this whole birth of a nation. And, and it limits the Canadian ideal of what it means to be Canadian to a very minimal thing. It doesn't allow for any change or any nuance in that. So I think that is extremely damaging. Um, yeah, so it's, it's unfortunate, but it, it, that's the way I think it goes. Okay, so this is a quick one. Um, I can cover really quickly. Um, so it's a thing that's also lost in the sort of nation building is this is all Canadian, 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 Canadian. I mean, it's not at all, right? Just discussed about those who are serving in the Canadian Corps or CEF generally as British born. Um, but for the battle actually in and of itself, I mean, the Battle of Emmy Ridge is part of the bigger battle of Arras. And then that is a smaller offensive that's designed to help support the larger coming offensive of the Nivelle offensive in the French line. So it, it's just like kind of like a nesting ball in that sense. Um, but that said, the Canadian Corps is augmented with British troops, British infantry, British artillery. Dave talked about that at length, which is linked below. Uh, if you want to check that out, if you missed that live stream the other night, which was fantastic, Dave did an amazing job. Um, it is what it is. Uh, it's just this is these are pure facts that are easy to prove. Um, so I actually I wrote it down because <laughs> I don't want to forget the numbers. So actually attached to the second division is the 13th British Infantry Brigade, and, and I grabbed it from the map. Actually, hold on, I'm gonna shift this real quick. Bear with me one moment. Here you can see them here. They're on the map that comes from Nicholson, the, the official history which is easy to find and available online for free. And this is, maps are amazing. This is them right here. There is an actual British infantry brigade involved in the battle. It's, it, to me, like that's, I mean, obviously it's a small part of a much larger battle, right? Because you have all the four divisions here spread across and then flanked by two British Corps, not the second British Corps, but first Corps and 17th on this side um, and everything else going on behind the lines with all the artillery and logistics and planning. Um, but an actual brigade is involved, like that thing that is the Canadian thing, right? The Canadian infantry. It's not just Canadian infantry, right? There's a literal British brigade involved in the battle and no one talks about them ever. Like they never get discussed. I mean, fleetingly and rarely. So I just wanted to cover that one really, really quickly. So yeah, so that's really cool. Um, so this is an interesting one from Ivan. I don't know if Ivan's watching, if he might be working um, with the crazy times and everything. Um, but it, it's an interesting way of thinking about this, right? Because I have a lot of supporters, and again, thank you all who are American. And thank you. I mean, it's great uh, to have such an American support, especially for something like this. I, I think it's great because we can learn from each other and take different perspectives. Like Ivan makes an excellent point here, and without maybe trying, maybe he did. I don't know. He'd be pretty pretty crafty. Um, but what was the Battle of Emmy Ridge? That's, that, that's a broader question. I'm not going to be able to answer right this second, or even in this live stream. But I think because he, he was a, he's a former Marine, or um, once Marine, always Marine, I believe is the saying. Uh, Bella Wood, and like why that's important to the Marines, right? That's one of the that's the lore of the Marine Corps. Um, it, like it, it, obviously, it's a significant part of that. I mean. I think in Bella Wood, that's the case for the Marines. I don't think a lot of Americans might not even know exactly what that is or what that means, but the core knows why is that that is important. I mean, that's why it's such a hard question to answer in this sort of form without writing another, you know, a whole other book being written on Vimy. And I'll get to that later, but not that I wrote it. <laughs> but, you know, what is it? Why is it important? It's important because a lot of people made it important. Um, so, yeah. Oh, uh, oh, wow. Okay, sorry, I'm just distracted. Sorry, one second. I'll get to what just happened there in a minute. Um, but yeah, Ivan's question is excellent. And, and I hope I can answer that overall with everything that's going on. Um, 
on this sort of live stream and there's other videos linked below and other ones, other live streams. There's a little playlist link down below. If I can't get you the, you know, the answer you may be looking, not Ivan specifically, but anyone. But it, it is important in terms of that sense because we make it important. I think that's probably the best way to answer that right now. It's important because it was made important. And there's some other questions later on that I'll get to, but um, one second here. I just want to switch here because this is very, very generous. Thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate it. And the questions. So 50 pounds. Wow. Thank you so much. Um, or 50 euro. Sorry, 50 pounds. I can't. Tell. No, euros. Sorry. I just got excited because of the questions. How, question one, how was the public expectations and Canadian media eh, handled back home before the offensive morale factor? Okay, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, not really much, right? Because of censorship, there's not much discussion of a coming offensive. Um, you know, there's not much going on there um, in terms of that. Um, before, no, not really, because you don't really cover the offensives before. I mean, I think there's a little bit, but not much. I mean, people, I think people knew a spring offensive was coming from the Allies in 1917. We don't want to give too much away, right? Um, afterwards, though, it's, it's massive in a sense. Like, it's all over the place. Be, and not just Canadian media, just media generally. Because it's really the first Allied victory in a very long time. <laughs> and first big one in a long time after a lot of loss and defeats and all of this other stuff. And a, and a win in the middle of a bunch of other, vic uh, sorry, other losses or, or, you know, not Pyrrhic victories, but very heavy casualty victories that come before and after. I mean, the Psalm's not a victory in that sense. Huge casualties, Passion Dealing comes after that. So it, it, it's, you know, kind of a bright spot in terms of a lot of darkness for the Allies. And so that gets a lot of attention. It gets attention in Britain. Uh, the United States even pays attention to Vimy, even though the United States enters the war at the same time. Vimy is getting attention in the U.S. press, which I think is big. Um, that is big. I don't deny that at the time, that that's massive. I mean, not, no one's really saying it's, you know, Canada's a nation now, but it's it, 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 it's massive. Uh, and I hope that that kind of answers it because there's only so much you can do um, before, but afterwards you can kind of give the details because the Germans know. <laughs> but before, um, not really much. There's not much really expectation of anything, really. Um, from the Canadian press, because also the Canadian press isn't really in there like other presses, right? The British press, but again, censorship always plays a massive role. Um, so the preparation here, so again, that kind of goes back to the Curry thing. Curry's not the Canadian Corps commander. He's not until after this. He's not in charge of everything. He's still first div commander. Um, that that's that's part of it. Yes, he goes and learns from the French of what they had learned at Verdun. Um, that's a massive learning curve for everyone. I mean, Dave talks about this uh, afterwards. I don't know necessarily about the sand models. I, I, I don't know if that, that's not his invention. That's around before. I don't know about the general staff adopting it, even, you know, wholesale or really on a bigger scale. I don't know. I know there's a lot of practice, not necessarily in the sand tables, but that becomes more prevalent as the war goes on, particularly in the Canadian Corps, of preparation, maps, that kind of thing. I mean, I can talk about why that gets a focus, but as far as the general staff, I don't know. But this is a little different, right? And I think it still speaks to this, is the amount of preparation, sorry, the amount of time. Because the Canadians entered the line in the Vimy sector, what, in late 1916, November? Something like that. They've been there for a long time, long time to prep, long time to prepare, all of that. So you, you can do these things. You can see the ground. You can raid and, until your heart's content and learn every little bump of ground and all of that, especially from the experiences that had come before from the French and the British in the sector. Um, so that helps, obviously, because then you can do these things. If you're playing you know, an offensive that like comes later, like a Canal de Nord after occupying the ground for like two weeks, it's not going to be the same. You can't sand table everything when, you know, the, the offensives are still moving. Here you have the luxury of time and knowing where the fight's going to be because you can pick the battleground because you're launching the offensive. So I know that doesn't necessarily answer your question, but I think that speaks more gradually, or sorry, more generally to like Curry's role. Yeah, he plays an important role in it, but he's not the one making the major decisions. 
right? That's higher than him. Um, so hopefully that uh, that is uh, that uh, answers your questions. Um, those are some tough ones, <laughs> but thank you again for the support. It, it means so much to me. Thank you so much. Okay, let's go back to the questions on here. Um, yeah, this one I kind of answered before um, about, you know, the impact and, and, and avoid some facts like the, the British involvement. And the, uh, there's another question coming, but this one I think is just an overall question I like to keep in mind about the legacy and impact and what's been pushed aside. So that's something to keep in mind. But that is definitely one that I would like to highlight is there's a whole British brigade involved. Right, it's it, it's not just Canadian divisions or Canadian brigades fighting, uh, sorry, infantry brigades fighting at Vimy. So that's one that's pushed aside because there's more um, coming as well. Um, yeah, so these are the big ones too, and I'll get to those in a bit. So I can go to the questions in the side now. Just let me go back up to the top. I just don't want to miss anybody. Because again, thank you all for coming out. Okay. <laughs> so Dave is a bit tongue in cheek, but this is being discussed over on Twitter, I think probably still. Um, yeah, the battle started and why is it 19th of March? I mean, obviously we talked about that the other day on the live stream uh, about the artillery preparation and everything like that. I said on Twitter, kind of jokingly, but not really. It's good luck. You're not going to change that perception. We can barely, like I said, is that, I think it was to Jason, uh, whose question just saw a second ago. You're not going to get people to even understand the basic facts that Curry's not the Canadian Corps commander of any rich, <laughs> let alone change the dates of when these things happen. I get the broader overall point. It's kind of on that academic level um about you know when these things happen and what that looks like and what we can say is the actual battle yes of course it starts well before the ninth starts months before um even the artillery duels uh, sorry the artillery preparation and, and duels a little bit um so i i, I get what you're saying and, and i think there's a broader point there but uh, that's a complicated one for sure but i mean i'm picking my battles is basically what i'm trying to say and i'm going to focus on certain things and Sorry, Dave. Great work. You know, I support everything you got going on. That's not a torch I'm willing to take up right now. <laughs> um, and Andres isn't really a question, but visiting Vimy, yes, it is. Again, I'm not saying these things about trying to undo the myths and everything just to belittle people or belittle accomplishments. It's not what I'm doing. I still think you should visit. You should still see the memorial. It is the national memorial for Canada in France, uh, overseas. Um, it has all the names of those with no known grave. Some of those names now have been graves now, um, but no known grave who died in France. Uh, other ones are listed elsewhere, the ones in Belgium, Meningate mostly. Um, so it's important memorial. It's a beautiful location. There's preserved trenches. The lines are still the same as it was at the time, at least on Hill 145. Um, it's a really fascinating place to visit, generally speaking. And you can go into the tunnels with the guided tour. You can't just go by yourself. It used to be like that. I wish it was, but you got to take the guided tour through um, and booking it through the, the visitor center. Uh, so, yeah, I've been in them. <clears throat> Excuse me, barely fit. Sorry, I need water. One sec. I barely fit in them, but it was fun. I'm glad I had a heart attack because I bonked my head like three times. But, yeah, it's definitely worth visiting. It's really, really interesting what you get to see down there and just how soft that chalk actually is. It's really crazy. Okay, sorry. Da, 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 da. <laughs> so, so there's no Vimy Ridge Day in Canada. <clears throat> no, there is not. I mean, in a de facto, um, kind of, um, but it's no big deal. I mean, it is. It was on the centenary. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry, everyone. Uh, there was on the centenary, uh, uh, but ever since then, not really. Uh, it's been pretty quiet. I mean, COVID obviously plays a role in that. Uh, but um, not really. You can start in schools and stuff like that uh, if it is during school, which is rare, uh, just because the Easter long weekend and all that kind of thing. Um, it's not really marked by anything. I'm sure there'll be a, a ceremony at the National Memorial, probably a very small one. It's never really advertised. They don't really advertise these. Um, but no, there is no Vimy Ridge Day. There's not really anything military day in Canada. All we have is really Canada Day, and that's it. <clears throat> so this uh, from JD, it's really interesting point because it, it, it 
when I went again, that was a while ago. Now I graduated high school in 2006. Um, God, that was a long time ago. Um, it was uh, when I went, it was a big deal. I mean, you had to take, I don't know what the requirements, if they've remained the same, you had to take Canadian history twice, uh, I believe. Or no, at least once. You had to take in grade 10, uh, at least once. And that Vimy Ridge is a huge focus in the Ontario curriculum at the time. It was massively focused on. It was one of the only things we talked about was Vimy Ridge this and Vimy Ridge that. I mean, I took a test, and this is why I talked about the creeping barrage earlier about Canadians claiming or Canadians claiming that Canadians invented it and used it for the first time, blah, 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 blah. It was on the test, you know, like what is a creeping barrage? I mean, obviously, I think that's cool. And as a historian now, it's relative, but if you're average Canadian, they don't need to know what a creeping barrage is. You know what I mean? It's, it, it, it's interesting and we should talk about these things, but I think we should talk about them in, in different ways and not just focus on those such dry facts and that kind of thing. Uh, but I digress. It, it is focused on. Um, World War II doesn't really overshadow, at least it didn't. I don't know more recently. By World War II, I would argue it's the opposite. Uh, World War I overshadows World War II in a lot of ways because of that, you know, the birth of the, sorry, I turned around, the birth of the nation myth, right? I think Canada, sorry, First World War gets focused on more because of that. I mean, we had the centenary. Maybe things will change as the Second uh, World War centenaries approach. Uh, maybe that'll change the focus. I don't know. I can't say for sure. But I think overall, and this is probably even one of the most controversial statements today, is I think First World War, as people perceive it today, is far more influential on Canada of today than the Second World War. Come at me if you want. <laughs> but things like memorials are all First World War. They add the Second World War ones later, often on the back, on the sides. Like, I mean, I'm getting into the nitty gritty here, but you don't see, sometimes you don't see those names. Or you have to go looking for them, literally down and under and up and over. Like most of those memorials are First World War memorials. The National Memorial is First World War Memorial. It was never intended for anything else. They just didn't want to build another one. So they're like, yeah, that'll work. Good enough, uh, as we tend to do in this country. But I, I think, yeah, and things like memorial arenas, memorial cups, literally, the, you know, the Junior A hockey trophy in this country when all the teams, winners of all the leagues get together is a memorial cup because of the First World War, not the second. You know, there's so many of them that are named after First World War, things that are named after First World War, generals and individuals and people that are far more than the second, I would say. I could be wrong, but that's just my opinion. Okay, so Sheila again, YouTube channel member, thank you for all your support, particularly as of late. Um, why and how do these myths, like the birth of a nation myth, get started? Excellent question. So there, this ties into a whole bunch of things and, and some of my show and tell that I brought for today, other than the hat. <laughs> um, people do it on purpose. A lot of it is at the time. Some of it's in the immediate aftermath. Canada's not fighting, but kind of fighting for a place at the table, literally at Versailles, right? Warden, prime minister, is literally trying to get involved, and he does, wants a place for Canada as a separate signatory to Versailles. I mean, it's literally one of those British Empire indent Canada, just like the other dominions, which is interesting. Um, but it, it's things like that. It's like, oh, we did this. We're a nation now because of Vimy Ridge, so we should have this equal say at Versailles as, you know, like Belgium does kind of thing. Uh, that's part of it. A lot of it comes, and maybe I can get to it later, but and Tim Cook covers this expertly in his book on Vimy, which again is linked down below. If you haven't read this thing and you want to understand Vimy, this is the place to go. It's not even that much. Like, it's not a big book, and it's not dense. It's it's intriguing in the way he covers the battle. And he says the battle and the legend. You want to understand the myth of Vimy, this is the place to go. Not this, which is Pierre Burton's book. This is a very old edition. It doesn't even have the dust jacket anymore. Um, don't go here. Go here. Sorry about that, everybody. We I bumped my internet. I should move the books. Um, yeah. So uh, things like that, the centennial are a huge role in this um, because it's also the anniversary of Vimy Ridge, right? It's the 50th anniversary around the same time. Things come out, articles get written about, you know, I witnessed the birth of a nation at Vimy Ridge, blah, 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 blah. I mean, I have another video linked about that down below, came out a while ago, 
about it's a myth in my opinion um so yeah it's really interesting uh, looking at when these things start tim does an excellent job in covering that 67 has a massive role in that you know the expo and everything and trying to set off a different identity from that of what was british canada basically right we have the flag and all of that's all connected to this um, again hard to explain on a forum like this Tim does an excellent job, but I think that plays into it. And then more recently, things like the centennial, all of that play into this. Um, but it's been going on since the battle itself. Um, and the memorial, which I might talk about separately, just because there's a lot there, um, plays into it too, right? Why the memorial is where it is. Um, and I want to go into that maybe a bit more detail afterwards, if you don't mind. Uh, Sheila, hopefully that does it. Um, yeah, I know. I'm trying to say these things because uh, uh, the Legion might not like it because it just doesn't fit the truth, but I don't want to clash with the Legion too much. Yes, and Newville St. Vass has a huge German World War I cemetery. I have been there. It is massive. It's absolutely massive. Um, yeah, it's, it's a sombering place because like a lot of German cemeteries, it's full of mass graves. Um, just particularly because it was behind the Allied lines for so long. Um, yeah, it's it's just, and that's also the policy. After the war, France made them consolidate the cemeteries. So it's it, 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 it's a sombering place to visit for sure. And again, yeah, the scale of that place is massive. I think there's two mass graves right next to each other that contain, I don't know how many fallen soldiers, and it's just an astronomical amount. Um, so back to Heather's question here. Um, what I covered your other one earlier, if you missed it. Um, no, Burton's not the blame for the Canadian thing. He's for, you know, getting that stronger, right? It it's already exists by the time he writes this with the Victoria Cross on the front for some reason, embossed into this version, which I still don't understand. Um, no, he's not to blame, but this is where you can trace a lot of what people say today about Vimy particularly online. Uh, like I see it all the time. It, it's hilarious. Like people would be like, Canadians were at the war, you know, they were more rural and they knew how to do things like shoot and ride. And I'm like, yeah, because a clerk at Eaton's who just fills out forms all day knows how to ride and shoot in downtown Toronto. Like, what? <laughs> like, that doesn't make sense. Because that's what Burton told people. And he was wrong. So wrong. And I was looking over this again today, and he just makes crap up, and we have to believe him because he's the only one who was doing it. Anyway, so no, he's not to blame, but he's to blame in perpetuating it and making it, I would argue, stronger. And why, oh, sorry, why I wanted to say that is because back at the centennial of the battle, the Canadian War Museum had a, a special exhibition on Vimy, but, but how Vimy's remembered and all of that. It wasn't on like, oh, you know, the, the artillery did this, and then this battalion did this. It was things like, how is Vimy used in memorials related to like Afghanistan? How does that imagery connect and everything? And they literally had this same edition of uh, Burton's book on display. So I think that speaks volumes. They didn't really say much about why things are the way they are, but they put the book on display from their home library, which I think is is fascinating that this book, which at the time, it still is not that old, right? It's old, but it's not that old. It has a role to play to me is just, that's more funny than anything, to be honest with you. Hey everyone, thank you for coming up. Sorry, I'm catching up with everyone here. Um, hello you, thank you for the promotion earlier on Twitter. Um, sorry, I'm just reading this. Maybe this got covered down below because I know Dave is still here. Um, or if he was here. I don't know if he's here. Well, there was a Vimy Ridge Day. Sorry, I keep getting distracted. Um, uh, Dave covers that pretty well. It goes on for quite some time. Um, the, oh, sorry, I don't know why I did that. Uh, um, lots of time, months. I mean, Dave talked about that in the live stream the other day. Again, he's the expert and he's here. <laughs> and his book is available and linked down below. Again, it's it's an affiliate link for myself. So I, I, I do receive a commission if you buy through there, um, which helps me run the channel, just like the Super Chats do. Because um, it's a lot of work and a lot of time to get this stuff uh, rolling out. Even something like this, where I'm just answering questions on the fly, still takes a little bit of work to get ready. And it's very helpful. Uh, sorry, with that said, yes, there's time, lots of time to prepare. Dave talks about that in, in the live stream. So I don't want to steal his thunder because his book is literally coming out in a few days and is available to be ordered now. 
Um, but he talks about that in the live stream. If you want to check that out, I can I can maybe uh, do a time tag or something later about that. Uh, but I have to run after this live stream, so I'll have to remember. Or if you want, I can just send it to you if you remind me. But it's a long time, long, long time. Uh, and it's pretty effective. Uh, another one of those things that I maybe we'll get to talk to you later that I think is interesting about this battle that gets overshadowed by other things. Oh yeah, about the hundred days. Yeah, it's it's connected in sort of. Uh, again, um, I still think the hundred days is far more important than Vimy will ever have been, but that's going to be kind of controversial. Controversial for a lot of people. Okay. Yes, Hugh, you're right. Sorry, one second again. Um, you're right in that sense. They're integrated, but they're still mostly British. There's not enough British, uh, sorry, enough Canadian staff officers to run all this stuff. They're just not trained to do it. That's the problem. They just weren't, they didn't have the training. I mean, that's one of the things that Tim Cook talks about is what took to get there. It takes a long time, right? And, and Bing has his staff that he has. I mean, he takes a good chunk of it with him when he goes to command third army. So that leaves a hole and Curry wants to get Canadians in there or people he knows. So that's part of it. Yeah, they're integrated, but there's just not enough Canadians to fill all these roles yet. They're still training. It takes a long time. I'm, you know that. I know you know that. <laughs> I'm not saying you don't know that, but you know what I mean? It just, it takes a long time to get there because they, it took forever just to get that process moving and to do it properly, right? It's not easy to do and have this battle experience with the staff. Yes, they're integrated, but it's still mostly British staff, particularly at the core level. Yes, many big craters, uh, which is an interesting thing too. You know, Andreas just keeps giving me things to think about with actually without questions. Because when you go to the say like Hill 145, right? You see, it's just full of them, shell craters and, and mine craters. They're everywhere, they're massive. I mean, there's one literally at the front line, right? Where that tiny little chunk of no man land is just this giant dip. Like those come from before, like the British did that. Or the you know, shell craters are from, you know, the second battle of Artois in 1915 when the French got there and the Moroccan division got to the peak, right? The heights and then was pushed off. Like this battlefield had been pummeled and blown up for a very long time. And, and sometimes it can be hard for people to, picture that not having to do with what the Canadians did at Mimi Ridge. And one of the things, again, when I was there a long time ago, they didn't really do a good job at the site of trying to tell that story, that it's not just the Canadians who got that place the way it was, or that battle in particular. Yeah, and, and, and you teach us in high school. So yeah, it's it's Eve, Mimi, Psalm, and Passchendaele, and that's about it. No context. That's what I remember. Um, mostly um, things like inscription gets a lot of attention, as it should, but home front gets a lot of attention. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it's unfortunate, but the context is important. Oh, Wolfram, well, thank you for joining us. Yes, okay, Dave, yeah, you are right. I forgot about that. I mean, <laughs> okay, how do I how do I say this? Um, because the government does it doesn't mean people care. <laughs> Or no, <laughs> I knew about this and forgot. Nobody cares, right? It doesn't matter. We have lots of days that are named things for the government and nobody knows or gives a crap. Unfortunate as it may be, but we do officially have one, but no one gets a day off. Nobody gets anything for it or does anything for it really. But it's just a nice thing that parliament did back in 2003. Other than that, it doesn't really mean too, too much. Not, not practically speaking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, about the notifications. Yeah, there's nothing I can do about that. Um, sorry. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. That's been going on for a long time. Um, there's been notification issues with YouTube for years, and nothing seems to be done about it. People keep bringing it up, and nothing seems to be done. And I, unfortunately, there's nothing I can do other than post about it as much as I can. Yeah, and you're right, Scott, the main U.S. tomb, of, you know, so it's for World War I dead. Yep, yeah, uh, that's it. It all stems from World War One, right? Same with the French. Um, I mean, the Second World War is a little different. Uh, Britain, too. Um, but in Canada, it's so strong, right? It's so strong. Stronger than other nations, I would argue. 
And yes, Tim is a brilliant historian, uh, great guy to work for, uh, work for him multiple times. Just a great guy in general. Um, yeah, he's a, he's a great guy. And if you don't know his stuff, you should. Like his stuff is amazing, academically researched, accessible. I literally was at a conference. This is a complete aside, but I was at the the SMH conference when I was here in Ottawa, 2016, a long time ago. I I saw people who literally I could hear them because I was talking to somebody else in the room. They said they bought t- like tickets. They came to the conference just to get books signed by Tim. Like that's that's crazy. <laughs> that's amazing. Right? Like that's like historian rock star in Canada as much as you can have. Sorry, I'm catching up, everyone. I'm just reading all the comments. Yeah, I mean, Georgia doesn't surprise me. Um, unfortunate as it is. It was a while back, I was in touch with people working on the, trying to get a national memorial for the U.S. I don't know how that ended up. If anyone knows, please let me know in the comments. Because there was the one in D.C., but that was just for locals. So I don't know where that got. If I think it got finished. I'm not entirely sure. But it's unfortunate because I'd say, too, obviously, the Second World War, World War II, sorry, in the U.S. has a massive impact on the country. But World War I has a, a massive impact, too, that's just almost completely forgotten. We have a book back there somewhere about the impact of World War One on the United States. Fascinating. The things that you see and how these things that move forward and you know in the United States through the 20th century is, is fascinating, and it's just not discussed. It's, it's really unfortunate. Yeah, it's an excellent book. Um, it's so good they made me book. It's excellent. And then, where's the other one? Sorry, I got too many books going on. Desk of a Historian, right? So this is Shock Troops. It's volume two. I suggest getting both. But this puts Vimy into context for the troops of the Canadian Corps, which is important. I mean, because some of them go, isn't just their only battle, right? Or some of it's their first and all of that stuff. So it puts it into... Uh, it puts it into good context and it's expertly written. I mean, it won all kinds of awards. It's still the tops in the field. So it's definitely something to consider reading uh, both of them. I mean, it changed my perspective on so much and kind of led me down the path I am on now, actually, now that I think about it. Yeah, I mean, we they changed the curriculum a little bit, right? I was just after the, the, the phasing out of grade 13. Um, so they changed it to grade 10 was required. Um, but that's about it. I don't know if it's still changed. Um, or sorry if it's changed or not. I, I, I don't think so. Um, but it's really interesting um, that it was an elective for you at that late. It, it's just, it's unfortunate. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's a, that's a good point. I mean, about, because I want to talk about Burns. So I guess that's a good place to do it. But again, thank you for the uh, support on the channel. It is Burton's book. I read this. Oh, geez. I think it's this literally this copy. I think I got it from my grandfather way back when. Um, I read it a long time ago. I was 12, 13 ish. And same. I thought it was good, like good history. I mean, the writing is spectacular. Burton could tell a story. He was a journalist by trade, he could tell a story, no problem. That's not the issue. I thought it was all good to go. You know, the, the, the things that I thought were that are myths that I know now are myths based in basically not in reality were, were legit. I believe the whole, you know, ah, there, get the hat out of my face. The uh, the whole, you know, the rugged Canadian, you know, on the, on the frontier, every Canadian soldier, you know, every Canadian's a soldier and blah, blah, blah. And I, I believed all that and everything it's it, it's just it's not good history it's not good history it's a story it's not no it's not fiction but it's getting close i mean yeah he conducted interviews i've said on the channel multiple times that you know oral history is problematic it's excellent in what it does when you need it but it's also problematic and has to every of these stories have to be taken with a, you know a, you know huge grains of salt these interviews are being conducted in the 1980s 70s 80s some of the 60s. Still, 50 years later, or up to 70 years later, it's a long time. Memories get forgotten. Things get conflated. Things are just wrong. And it's just, it's problematic. And that's what Burton did. 
that's the journalistic background. He relies on what people were saying. It comes across later, and it's just it's just not good history in that sense. And he just makes things up or believes things that people say. He's not the only one, unfortunately. But for Vimy, and because he has that outsized presence, still does, even though despite having passed away, I don't know how long ago now, he still has that place where you know he's seen as some sort of authority when he shouldn't be. He he's no historian in that sense he's not really a historian again another controversial thing but he's not really a historian in the way he conducts his work or didn't conduct his work it, it, it's different yeah but yeah it's it's not a good book if you i was going to say the comparison if you think this is good and you want to start here don't go here this is better this is where you start you don't start with burton you start with tim cook Hopefully Cook replaces Burton. Sorry, I'm not trying to <laughs> got lots of things flying at you. This, you know, hopefully Tim replaces Jared Burton. I hope. I really hope in the grand scheme of things. But I can only do so much. See, that that's interesting because growing up in Burton, I'm assuming, I don't want to assume for you. <laughs> assume things, but it's, I think it's done differently there, especially because it's so close. Like when I did the Battlefield Tour forever ago, there was all kinds of school groups. Um, we don't do that here. We can't. It's not easy. It's not cheap. Mm -hmm. So you can't just go over there, you know, for a week or weekend or whatever. Just get a pile on a bus. You can't. It's expensive. Most people never go. Most Canadians never go over there. It's unfortunate, but it's, it's just the facts of things, the distance of this country to other ones. It is what it is. Sorry, I'm just... Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I probably shouldn't laugh at that, but... Um, yeah, delaying about it until the day or whatever. The school's over. Yeah, it's a bit awkward. Um yeah. Yeah, it was a uh, self Sifton story from around the area where I grew up, uh, Elgin County. Um, yeah, his story is fascinating. I mean, I visited his uh, grave in France, um, uh, Litchfield Crater, um, Winds of Victoria Cross from, oh, God, I shouldn't remember, forget the name of Tom. Uh, Tier Connell, Ontario? Yeah, technically. Tiny, tiny, tiny little place. Tiny. And they have a, a headstone for him there in the same uh, cemetery, actually, as um, Talbot, uh, Thomas Talbot, Colonel Talbot, who was in charge of Upper Canada. Um, it's fascinating that those two figures have a connection like that. It's, it's a fascinating story. I have a video about it. I, I don't know if I linked it specifically, but it's in the Vimy playlist. It, it's on the channel. His story is... It, is amazing and uh, never made it home. One of the many. Uh, Scott, yes, we've talked about the, the Motor Machine Gun Brigade before. Um, they play a somewhat limited role. Um, I don't think they dismount. Maybe they did. I don't know for sure. Um, um, I don't know. I don't want to say for sure. I don't know for sure if they did or not. I, I, I don't think they played a massive role in the battle. Um, kind of like the cavalry plays a minor role in the battle and does things more behind the lines, as far as I can tell. I mean, you, you, we've, you and me, this is just you and me, but you have me look into this, and it, it's very inconclusive of what's going on. Um, a lot of the focus is on everything else. So maybe they were just in a support role, as far as I can tell, uh, based on that research that I did and some more digging. Just like the cavalry, same sort of idea, as far as I know. Andres. Uh, no, I haven't had him on the channel. I wanted to uh, a while back. Things just didn't work out. Timing and my email got lost in his inbox. <laughs> uh, and then, unfortunately, he became ill. Um, so I, I didn't want to pressure on him. He seems to be doing better. So maybe sometime soon I want to get in touch with him again. Um because yeah, he was just he was not doing well medically. So he, I hear he's better. 
but he's busy again because he's always busy. <laughs> he's a busy man. Um, so yeah, so I will do my best. I would love to get him on the channel. Um, I've reviewed his books and all his stuff on here before. Obviously, I'm a big fan. Um, yeah. Oh, okay, they are building it. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure if they were building the new one or adapting that local one. But thanks, guys. Yeah, I, I haven't been to DC in forever. I need to get back down there. Check out all those sites again. It's been a long time for me. I, I don't. Um, no, I, I don't have Hughes bio. Um, just the Tim Cook one. Uh, the, you know, the Butcher and the Madman comparing Curry and uh, Hughes and you know, all of that fun stuff. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, that'd be great to have one, though, because yeah, he's an interesting guy. A lot of people here know I'm not a fan. Um, but yeah. Yes, another place I'd like to get to is just. Getting down to Missouri is not on the top of the list for anything else, unfortunately. Sorry, not to, I know Scott's from that here. So even though he's got that Canadian in him. Um, you know what I mean? It's just it's it's just not things that come up for me. I'd have to like make a specific trip to go there. I do want to very badly. Because I, I think it's a, from what I've seen, it looks like an amazing museum. And it's just a cool location. Um it just doesn't um, doesn't come up for me yet. Maybe sometime in the future that would be awesome conference or who knows what something will come along the lines and give me the reason to go other than that i'd have to make one yeah i think you came in late uh, for this but uh, yes they're overlooked i mean they play again relatively this is all relatively speaking minor role ish right the the four canadian divisions are the assault divisions excuse me but that brigade 13th brigade plays a role and they help you know um take uh, that position as I showed on them. I can pull it back up again. One moment, please. I can pull it back up again. Yeah, right here. I've already got the still, uh, still. Yeah, Hill 135 and Thales uh, Crater. Or, sorry, Trench. As you can see there. Yeah, it, it was a marked position in that video that's coming up. Uh, released uh, tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow morning at 10 for general public. It's already up for patrons and YouTube channel members, by the way. Um, is mentioned in that animated map they made back when. I can't date it. I think 1918. can't date it exactly. But anyway, it was enough to highlight then. So clearly it's important. Um, and the 13th Brigade is part of it. So yeah, of course I do. They are overlooked. Uh, you know, even the divisional artillery, as Dave talked about, is overlooked um, and should be included. More discussions about this. It's not just this Canadian show that we want it to be. Yeah, um, yeah, he just he's a writer. I mean, the researcher. If he's got a team of researchers, they didn't do a very good job, unfortunately. To say. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's. I think you kind of hit the nail on the head there, Heather, um, and kind of how I think about it. Yeah, you know, Burton's is engaging and entertaining, and it's got these stories and like Wilbur, because Wilbur wrote a ton himself, right? Is part of it. He's a major character in Burton's book um, and then with the black watch and everything, they're very well known Italian regiment. I don't know if O'Keefe is here. <laughs> um, it's, uh, but I think that's where it stops. Tim's is thought provoking. Like you said, it's all of those things. It, it gets into it. it. It gets you wanting to know more. I mean, at least that's me, right? I mean, that's how I wanted to dig into these things is because of Tim and how he did it. Burton's book, not so much. I thought it was definitive, I guess, is the best way to say it, where Tim raises questions and wants you to think about these things, as he does, because he's got that academic training, right? Or as Burton did not, again, not belittling one or the other. Um, it's just that's how the different fields operate, and that's how it goes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's combined operation, yes. But the glory, that comes later, though, I think. A lot of that comes later. Um, but particularly because most of the rest of the offensive around Vimy Ridge doesn't go well. So it's a bright spot for everybody. It's not like everyone's claiming it as their own, you know what I mean? But it's it's a bright spot in a lot of bad. Like, the Neve offensive fails massively, leads to the French beauties. But, you know, the Ross offensive goes really, really bad. 
not great. Oh, hey, Paul, thanks for coming along. Another World War I expert. Great war. <laughs> great war. <laughs> when, did you, when did you do that? <laughs> Um, oh my god, when did you do that? That sounds pretty fun, actually. Yeah, that's one way to get them to understand. I hear that, that used to be a thing back in the day. I didn't know that was still a thing. <laughs> that's funny. I'm in favor of that. When, yeah, can you let us know when you did that? That's hilarious. Oh, yeah, thanks, Paul. Um, yeah, I couldn't really dig into it at this particular moment, obviously. Um, but yeah, it's um, interesting to think about how these things are, are worked, you know, how they can use them. I'm not really sure the barrage, uh, the machine gun barrage too much at Vimy. I know the other ones later better. Um, so I don't know if they have a role to play in that, but it's uh, it's interesting stuff for sure um, to think about what the role they would play and just fire from there and support fire, I would imagine, particularly, especially with machine gun barrages. I don't know if it plays a ma massive role or not. That I don't know. So Jason, yeah, this is your question. I think connects to your other question. I was going to come back to. You. Um, yeah, so I mean, Dave covers this at the uh, covered this uh, the other night again in his live stream um, about um, kind of the overall Allied strategy at the time uh, after the Somme has basically spectacularly failed in terms of some of its objectives. I mean, some of it was just to you know attract the Germans, which it clearly did. Um, is the Allies come together and, and, and have to come up with a strategy for 1917 at the Chantilly Conference, and, and this is what comes of it. Uh, Nivelle, Robert Nivelle, convinces the rest, sorry, he's the French overall commander, um, he convinces the rest, again, if I'm getting the particulars wrong, I apologize for anyone watching, uh, th that he can, well, French politics, sorry, the politicians in command, he can basically win the war with this new offensive he has planned. He convinces the Allies that this should be the big push for the Allies, but he's going to need support to draw, obviously, German reinforcements and German resources somewhere else because um, the, the Nouvelle Offensive is going to take place at the Chem Domain. Um, again, I'm sorry, I'm mispronouncing French. I'm terrible at it. Um, somewhere else. So you need to pull them elsewhere. In Artois is, sorry, Isaras is the place. They get pulled, and it, it's the focus is on another army, right? This is third army. First army is going to be no, sorry, I'm, I'm backwards here, um, right? Sorry, maybe it's not in here. It's not. Um, anyway, the British is the British is a sideshow. Sorry, Vimy Ridge is a sideshow and a sideshow is the best way to say it. So that's the overall context. I know there's not much going on there. Uh, it's not enough, but that, that's the best I can remember off the top of my head is Vimy's to distract. Also to take this position, which is an advantageous position to hold, which is leading to where I'm going with here. Um, it's an advantageous position to hold, particularly for the Allies, because the eastern slope looks over the Dubai Plain. One of the reasons why the memorial is where it is is because the vistas, the looks, the view is spectacular. Very few like it on the Western Front, uh, particularly where the Canadians fought. Um, I can just say it now, the Canadian memorial, and some of you have already heard this story, but the, the initial location for the National Memorial for Canada was Hill 62 in the salient at Ypres. Not the greatest vistas. <laughs> Those Flemish hills are not very big. Um, it's not the most impressive view. Um, it would have dominated the salient, though. It was supposed to be the same size. It would just been massive in that location. Um, it's moved for all kinds of other reasons. Access to roads is a big one for like the practical reasons. Mackenzie King wants to attach himself to this, so he tries to get it moved so he can get his name in there and not have to pay the veterans more money. And instead, here's a nice shiny memorial. Stop bothering me for more money. That's a big part of it. Um, so that said, um, the location is important strategically in a little bit of the sense. Is it a deciding battle? Absolutely not. Not even close. 
yes, it's an important location. The Allies hold it forever for the rest of the war, not forever, <laughs> for the rest of the war. The Germans don't attack it as part of the spring offensives of 1918 because that would have been a suicide run. You think the west side is a suicide run. When you look over the east side, it's even more so. It just would have blown them to pieces. Um, so yeah, of course they didn't attack it. Then uh, the war, absolutely not. Where it is decisive, and this isn't exactly what you asked, but is what it does to Canada. This is as much indirectly as direct as you can be in starting inscription. Obviously, there's other factors, the other battles, and the Somme drains the manpower. But Vimy is what gets Robert Borden, Prime Minister, mentioned earlier, to want conscription. It is Vimy Ridge, because he goes and visits the wounded from Vimy Ridge. Specifically mentions Vimy Ridge himself, saying, we have to support those who fought at Vimy. We need more people in the line. We keep sending those who are wounded back out. We shouldn't have to do that. That's when he starts the whole process to get conscription going, which nearly rips the country in half. Um, I think he handled it horribly. He pulled the Canadian trick of saying, I'm not going to do it, and then does it anyway later after not really good finessing the situation, unlike King in the Second World War, and some other things like Laurier with the with the Boer War. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Um, but I think it's decisive in what it does for Canada's experience of the First World War at the time. We don't really think about that now. And that's I'm not sure how many remember, but I mentioned something about possibly doing a book on Canadian military history myths, that's one of them. It's this, this Canada is this overall unifying experience and it's just not, it nearly rips the country in half. You have Canadians killing Canadians in the streets of, streets of Quebec City with rifles shooting at each other. It's just for something that was so poorly handled by the Borden government because of Emmy Ridge. So it's decisive in that factor. For the campaign, it has very little effect on the overall campaign, it has very little effect on the war. Yeah, it's an advantageous position come the spring offensives, which don't attack the ridge um, because the Canadians are there again. They can piece off the Canadian divisions because the position is easier to hold. But other than that, not really. It doesn't do what people claim it is. I mean, I retweeted uh, earlier, there's a video put up by Veterans Affairs. It's okay overall. But it's the same thing, you know, it's a decisive battle in the war and then nothing is said after that. You can say anything you want, it doesn't make it true. I can say anything is anything, but if I don't follow it up with any context or anything supporting it, it doesn't mean anything. And that's what you see all the time. It's just, oh, it's this. It's decisive because we say it's decisive. It doesn't mean anything. Every Canadian prime minister since has said that. And it's just not true. There's no evidence to support that in any way, shape or form. I mean, you can disagree with me and that's fine, but it's, it's just, in my opinion, it's there's no way to support that. So hopefully that's helpful. Uh, it's not a deciding battle in any way, shape or form. Those come later for Canada. Uh, I mean, Canada's learning things here. Um, maybe I want to, that can be like my uh, wrap up later, but it, it's not the battle in and of itself doesn't do what it's claimed to have done. Oh, I didn't know there was a direct from Toronto to St. Louis. That's cool. Um, yeah, there's Shemin, man. Starts the mutiny. Yeah, I heard about that. Um, I think that came around the same time as right now, actually. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, um, they just left it. It's the right thing to do. It's a war grave. Just leave it. Not everything has to be poked and prodded. Yeah, three years apart, the scholarship had changed. Um, but Burton's still there. Um, yeah. Oh, thank you for that. Thank you for coming out. Um, I think I'm finally catching up. Yes, and thanks again, Marks and Sparks. That was a very generous uh, contribution. Thank you so much. It means a lot to have so much help and support. Helps me keep this stuff going, because without that, I can't do it. Yes, uh, sorry, I forgot about that. Um, uh, yeah, they knew. The, what was coming, um, and then uh, it went horribly for the French army. Again, Andre already said, "Let's the mutinies." Horrible, absolutely horrible. Dave again gets to the pith of these things as he always does. Supporting attack for the arrest offensive, very successful, well planned supporting attack, but a supporting attack nonetheless. 
we claim it's nation building when in overall the war it's just a supporting attack for supporting attack. It is what it is. Yeah. So um sorry, one second. That's interesting. Uh, because you told me that before, David, and I don't know where that comes from. I'm not dis I'm not saying you're wrong. I just want to know where he said that. Because I dug and dug and couldn't find anything. <laughs> So if you know if where that came from, can you please tell me? Uh, I want because I want to tell people this because I I think that's awesome. It should be a Canal of the Nord. I agree. Far more important battle in terms of what a he did. So maybe there's a little personal bias there for him, obviously. But what the Canadian Corps was able to do and how much they had learned and everything like that, it's it, it's it's massive and and really interesting that you know Canal of the Nord is no one knows what that is. Talking to me, someone blue in the face, but. Canal de Nord, no one has any idea, even though I think it's far more impressive all around what they were able to do. All of the Canadian Corps. Fascinating. And I mean, Borlon Wood was a bloody fight. Super bloody. Nearly, again, 4th Division seems to get the short end of the stick in these offensives. Hill 145, the Pimple, and, and Borlon Wood. These high ground death traps, basically. Hard luck division, I guess. Yes. Yeah. I mean, sorry. Yeah. It's attacked. It's not attacked as, as the other parts, right? It's at like the edge of the major offensives that are launched by the Germans in the spring offensives. Um, yeah. It's, it, 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 it helps for the, yeah, exactly the reasons. I mean, it's, if you flip your thinking around, right. And think of the German perspective, looking at trying to attack the ridge from that side is just crazy. I mean, I just looked when I went there, I just, turned around and went, yeah, th th no wonder. Um, yeah, some grounds lost, but yeah, it, it's nothing major. Not like the other places. This isn't like outside Amiens or anything. Oh, thank you. I, I do um, appreciate it. I do appreciate it a lot. Any, any amount helps keep going. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, okay, yeah, Dan Cox bio. Okay, I'll have to check that out. Because <clears throat> I'd like to see that, because, I mean, the Curry stuff's all here, right? It's all in all. More museum and, and lack. So I think that would be really cool to check out um, where he says that and what he says about Vimy and everything. I mean, because I, I found some letters and I included them in my dissertation. He talks about the 100 days a lot, like a lot. I mean, because he's not a command, I mean, obviously. So he's not going to talk about that. But, like, things like, you know, crashing the DQ line are things he's talking to, like, Borden about and British politicians and, and, and British generals. And I can't remember who the letter was to exactly. I think it was to Borden, if I'm mistaken. But he he wanted it to be known that the Canadians were the first to crack that part of the Hindenburg line. Um, um, sorry. Um they were, he wanted it to be known that the Canadians cracked it first. Uh, it was in the context of, you know, we're Brits, but we're Canadians, but we're, you know, we're still British, but we're Canadians. Like it's the way he worded it. It was really weird. Um, but it was in that context. He's like, we're Canadians, but we're better to be British, but you know, the Canadians did this, you know, and this is like 1919. So, so this is why I looked at this because it has to do with identity for those of you who have looked at my dissertation, the thick book stop door stop that it is. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, it's an interesting way to think about it, but uh, yeah, he's all about the hundred days after the fact as well. So that doesn't surprise me. That's the context. Um, yeah, good point, Heather. I mean, maybe this is where I can make this point now. Um, yeah, supporting or not, is is arguing one of the largest advances at that point. Yeah, I mean, I don't know about distance wise, but. Mentally, maybe. Yeah, I mean, those things are always important, right? Like what these things occupy in the mind of those doing them or the enemy or the people at home or can be different than what's on the ground. Um, but but that said, I don't think it deserves that attention for that particular reason. Like the whole birth of the nation thing is, is gets lost. I think, okay, how do I say this? Because I was really starting to formulate this after the other night in the in the uh, live stream with Dave is the bat let me just bear with me through for a second here it's like the forest through the trees kind of thing what happened at Vimy right and, and this is obviously taking that artillery perspective 
is is massive in terms of what they were doing, what they were learning, carrying out. All of that is bigger. Sorry, not bigger, but it is is lost in amongst this whole birth of a nation stuff. Like the technical achievements, the what they were able to do. I mean, pummeling those those you know supporting lines into oblivion isn't discussed in that respect. It's just, oh, we're Canadians now. Like I think that gets lost if that makes sense. If you guys are following what I'm, if you're picking up what I'm putting down here, like there's accomplishments to be to be proud of. Quite frankly, that get lost in this bigger story of it should be. Um, so it, it's, uh, yeah, sir, this is, a, I figured as much. It's not even the biggest advance of that day. Um, I guess maybe up, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, extra distance when you go up. <laughs> but like flat territory gained, no, it's not. So I, I don't know. I don't I don't think so. Um, tell me back to Heather here. Um, honestly, no, I don't. Because, yeah, it, it was well done, well carried out offensive. Still the bloodiest thing in Canadian history. Period. Um, yeah, not even close. The amount of Canadians who died that day. Uh, it's, it's a lot of Canadians who died. And we celebrated for this sort of birth thing. And it, it's just a bloody mess. Yes, it's an f effective, successful battle. But it's still a lot of blood is spilled on that ridge. And it's not the last place that it's spilled in the war. Right? Not even close. Still haven't had Hill 70 yet, which turns into its own quagmire in a lot of ways that we don't you know, like to take about because that one's taken on kind of its own mythos uh passiondale and 100 days are still to come and, and and that's why this isn't decisive because it doesn't change the war in that regard it doesn't really change much um it, it just i don't think it deserves this outsized position we've put it in and i mean collectively um yeah it's 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 not quite the same Um, interesting, Robin. I wonder why you think that. Uh, again, not necessarily disagreeing wholeheartedly, but I think that comes, again, I, this is a matter of opinion. I could be wrong. I think that really comes later. Like, it, maybe it gets tried, but it gets perfected later. Again, but then you can argue what combined arms even means. Um, so I'm just interested in your thoughts on that. Okay, this is a really good question. As far as I know, no. And, and I don't think it was offered. Maybe it was. The Americans didn't want it. Again, I could be wrong. I haven't done this in a long time. I, I, like as a lot of you know, I shifted to Canadian years ago. Um, was more focused on the United States. Did some digging in this because um, I did it as a paper a long time ago about the Americans and, and, and American exceptionalism, actually, and what effect that has on the AEF, actually, and, and what Pershing believed and, and divisional commanders and corps commanders and all that kind of stuff um, about the lack of Americans wanting to learn from their allies or associated powers. <laughs> um, they didn't want to learn. They didn't want to hear it. Uh, as far as I know, I could be wrong. It was a long time ago. Maybe the, the, the historiography has changed and there's other things out to light, but it didn't seem like they wanted to to to, to learn from the Brits and 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 the, everybody else. Like things, some of the first American offensives look like the Somme, and it's just it's not good. And they take huge casualties for seemingly no reason. So lessons had already been learned; they didn't have to be learned again. They just could have asked, and they didn't. Right? Pershing believed in you know the individual soldier and the rifle kind of thing. Like there's literally a famous quote about him saying that. And he did that in the field, and it didn't go well. A lot of Americans got killed. A lot of other Americans got killed when they didn't have to necessarily get killed. I mean, it's battle. People die. But it's just those lessons had already been learned. Why redo them? But again, I'm not an expert on that. I haven't done the, the primary research on that like other things. Um, but as far as I know, broadly speaking, again, I could be buying into a myth. And if I am, I apologize. But as far as I know, they weren't actively seeking advice from others they thought they could do it better because it had been stalemated for so long i get that <laughs> in a lot of ways they think they can come in and because these guys have been at it for so long and it's clearly not working we can try it what they think is differently and yeah and it just it doesn't work out as far as i know no there's no real um yeah 
Um, yeah, the, it, it, as far as I know, there's no like you know Vimy 101 for the AEF from anybody. Yeah, it, it's an impressive, and that's another thing I wanted to go. It's not to belittle that as well. Like it's an impressive place to visit. It's, it's an inspiring place to visit. The memorial, like I already said earlier, is a must stop and see for anyone. I say that for anybody. If you're interested in this kind of stuff, um, it's kind of off the beaten path, right? A little bit. Because uh, I had a friend who went years and years ago. Um, he's not a big interest in this kind of stuff. But he had a family member who fought it for me. He went well of his way to go there. Um, so that's kind of cool. But it wasn't easy for him to get to. <laughs> just because it is kind of off the beaten path a little bit. Um, he eventually figured it out and got there. And that was great. But yeah, it, it's uh, it's definitely worth a, a visit in the visitor center. Which is, there's the new one I haven't seen. They were building it when I was there. Getting it ready in time. Which I don't think it was. <laughs> Might have been, might not have been fully ready. These things tend to happen. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, it is a very impressive site, so I'm not trying to, to, to take away from that. Yeah, I mean, uh, okay, I see what you mean, Robin. Yeah, effective planning, coordination, tactics, training, and all the visions together. Yeah, well, actually, another thing, interesting point, again, not saying you're wrong here, Robin, per se. Um, but just not all all the divisions, right? They made an excellent point that fourth divs artillery wasn't there, hadn't been formed yet, or hadn't yeah, hadn't come online yet. So they're supported by the Lahore division. We talked about that in the live stream. Um, so yeah, so what that even means is even properly not understood, I think, in that terms, right? We say it's all four divisions again. It's on the back of the, the hat if you came late that I've been wearing this whole time. Um, but yeah, the four divisional uh, patches on the back of the hat. If it didn't have the birth of the nation nonsense on it, I'd probably wear it more. Um, but um, yeah, I see what you mean. I see what you mean, particularly with the Canadians uh, and the Canadian Corps. But yeah, I, I was thinking in terms of like um, weapons, um, like uh, tanks, artillery, uh, infantry coordinating with aircraft. That's what I was thinking of, because that definitely there's minor there's tanks at Vimy, but they don't they play they don't play a large role. Oh yeah, sorry, I'm jumping ahead here. Yes, that's true. Um, yes, they they did work closely with the French in a lot of ways. I mean, well, there's American troops under British command as well. And British formation, so they both. But yeah, I understand what you mean, Scott. Like they did more. I don't know, better. <laughs> but they, they seem to have a yeah, maybe a more cordial, better relation. Maybe better is a, is a good word to use. Uh, relationship with uh, the French than uh, the British. Um, I don't know that whole Lafayette thing. I don't know if that has to do with you know Lafayette. We are here, even though it's been years. <laughs> You're getting slaughtered, but we're we're here now. Um, <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, well, they, they could have learned those lessons from Verdun, right? So what's the what's the excuse there? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Oh yeah, tons of sites in that whole area. Well, I mean, any of that parts of the front. Well, don't have to tell most of you. I mean, Paul Reed's here. <laughs> so many sites to see, so many places that are important have Overall impact, emotional impact. I mean, it's just uh, there's so much going on on the Western Front. And again, Paul Reed's here. If you don't, uh, if you're not following him, I don't know how. <laughs> but he's got channel and everything and the podcast. If you're not following his stuff, you should. I mean, I've learned so much from Paul and how he goes about doing it and his decades of expertise and like living on the Corselet battlefield when we had him on the channel. And um, really like to get you back on, Paul, if you can, at some point, that'd be awesome. But anyway, so yeah, I mean, there's just the sights are um, spectacular. Oh, thanks for coming out. I'm glad you can join us for a little bit. Yes, the French had tried multiple times the fighting. Uh, major one, as I already mentioned, second battle of... Uh, Artois, if I'm getting the number correct, I think it's second battle, 1915. Uh, the Moroccan division gets the crest at Hill 145. Uh, they don't uh, hold it. Uh, there's a memorial there. It's actually an excellent, it's massive too. I mean, nothing is as big as Vimy because nothing is. It's one of the rare cases of Canadians 
out, right outsizing everybody else. Like it's it's crazy. Um, very much unorthodox for Canadians, actually, when you think about it. Sorry, uh, I digress. There is a memorial there for the Moroccans, uh, and the British took the sector first over from the French. No major offenses, um, not like on the scale of like Second Battle of Artois or anything like that. Um, things like that. They're, they're, they don't have a massive plan or big plan to take it. Like those craters, there's all that mining and countermining going on. Small battles, small things like that, but nothing big. So, so that's another part of these myths that come up, right? Is, you know, Canada did what others couldn't. Uh, it's not really 100% accurate because the French did it. Um, the French did it first. Yeah, they didn't hold the ridge. They got up there. Got pushed off. Um, and it's a beaten up battleground before the Canadians even get there. The Brits don't try a massive set piece battle like on this scale that you see from that map earlier. They don't try that. So that's just not accurate. And it's, it, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that, that that's how it seemed because it makes us feel better or something. I don't know. I don't like it, but that's the way it goes. But yes, there is other attempts to take the ridge. Yes, yes, they did. Yeah, that's a hell of a unit, by the way. Yeah, so I've been reading about that a little bit today. A little bit today. Well, I'm obviously read about it a ton, but the changing of the tactics and, and, and infantry tactics. And, excuse me. I mean, just spreading out and cover fire or game changers in, in a lot of ways it's just it takes time to learn but there's all kinds of other factors of why that's not used in certain cases and it is in others oh well, thanks paul yeah again uh, again i'm gonna keep saying it but this is the channel so and, and the podcasts i mean i've said this before but i get distracted listening to podcasts so especially paul's because <laughs> i used to try to put them on maybe i can now that i'm not you know like hardcore writing is like I used to be because when I was finishing up my dissertation I would try to put on Paul's uh, podcasts and just because of his style of delivery is I'm envious of it and his knowledge I get distracted and do nothing <laughs> just sit there listening <laughs> so uh, I don't know hopefully that's a ringing endorsement so so do check them out and the, the breadth of them is fantastic yeah oh yeah tour guides knows more than some historians do I mean actually a lot of them Good chunk of them do. I mean, there's bad tour guides, just like there's bad everything else. But learned a ton from tour guides on how these things go, and ground the importance of ground and and all of that. It, it can't be understated um, from tour guides. Oh yeah, I mean, it, it, it's like it's almost like it was designed for that. If that makes any sense, you know what I mean? It's just when you stand up on that. Well, I couldn't see it there actually. The day I was there. It was one of the worst rainstorms they'd had in France. And I don't know, I can't remember how long they said, like 50 years or something. Like they were literally moving things out of the basement of the Louvre because the flooding was so bad. We went through a tiny wall. I don't know if Dave is still watching. Um, um, sorry, I thought I saw him. It's his name. <laughs> um, there was a town cut in half because the river had burst its banks. Uh, anyway, so you couldn't see anything, really. You couldn't even see the memorial from the parking lot. Cause I've seen nice sunny pictures and it's dominating from that parking lot. We couldn't see it until we got closer up that lined uh, Avenue of trees. And then it came into view just cause there was so much rain and fog. So once you're up on the edge there, you can barely see it. Obviously I've seen photos and videos from it. So yeah, it's like, you can see lens and how it's all laid out. I mean, that's part of Dave's book talking about the, the foos, the forward observers I'm talking about like, this was, you know, it was like a observer's dream to call on these targets. They couldn't do it to the, to the planned um, degree because of the torn up battlefield. But it's just that vista you can see so far and see so clearly. Uh, that's why it was so important. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the Germans actually, yeah, pushed them off. I tried to push them off. Um, yeah, it, again, it's it's not on the same scale, but there's tons of fighting going on. But again, that whole myth of Canadians do it. Sorry, one second. Oh, sorry, something else. Uh, get a lot of messages and give a name. Um, 
yeah, so it's not the same, right? So that, that's a just disingenuous way of thinking about it. Um, but again, holding it is also important. So, and that's definitely not talked about here. Oh yeah, I mean, that's, that's why this is so interesting. Um, this is why this stuff is so interesting because it's got its own dimension now. Like this is why I like talking about this historiography stuff without calling it that because that's a lot of people don't know what that is, no fault of their own, or I think it's boring, but it's, it is, it's what this is. Burton has not infected, but set up myths and things that are hard to break and are not true and a whole other mess of things. It's, He's in there, and, and I see it all the time, particularly you know on the anonymous internet comment sections, people making these claims with no evidence because it comes from Burton's stuff, whether they realize even where that's it's coming from. Like I mentioned earlier, the whole rugged Canadian thing is Burton spends I don't know how much time in the book about that. Too long because it's not true. Not for everyone. Um, I mean, thing got downtown Toronto back then isn't so rugged. You know, they're not, you know, shoot, having shootouts at Young and whatever. <laughs> it's not happening. So, and that's in that book. And it just infects our thinking. And it, it's unfortunate. Again, like I said earlier, Cook should replace Burton. Yeah, the loose guns, they up the amount of firepower, ah, fire and maneuver, um, things like that. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, he was literally tasked with doing that after um, Verdun and the song. He, he went to visual staffs and learned from both uh, French and British because, um, well, because um, Bing told him to. <laughs> he ordered him to do it. I mean, Curry wasn't perfect. No commander is perfect. Curry makes mistakes like anyone makes mistakes. He makes mistakes at Lens. He uh, makes mistakes at uh, Canal du Nord. Uh, even though that's his magnus opus, he makes mistakes there. Uh, they, everyone makes mistakes. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, he, he's willing to learn, and, and and his mind was seemingly designed this for warfare on this scale. Definitely wasn't designed for business. Uh, <laughs> so um, this is in his wheelhouse. Organization was his thing. He was able to learn from others, which was also, like you say, crucially important. Uh, if there's any questions I've missed, please repost them. Um, or if you have any other ones, please keep firing away. I just want to make sure I covered everything I wanted to cover. Oh, yeah, there's lots of people who are willing to learn from each other. It just took some times it was more difficult than others. Yeah, his books are all excellent. Well done. I know because I know his process now because <laughs> I asked him. Got very lucky there to get to uh, ask him how he does it. And I thought he just had this natural ability of writing. I mean, I think he does. He's just very humble. But just it's a lot of work as well to get where he is at. Uh, I mean, he's just born with that. I think some people are just born with these talents. I'm unfortunately not one of them. Everything I do is a struggle in that regard. Writing is a struggle for me. Um, I just love history. I'm just not a good... Uh, I'm not like a natural born writer, uh, where I think Tim is. Yeah, I don't, I don't know too much about him, uh, to be honest. I probably should learn more uh, about the Australians specifically, but I, I just don't know as much about uh, um, the whole thing with the uh, with the Australians as much as I should. Sorry, I'm just double checking, making sure I covered everything, or if there's anything else you guys would like me to ask, or my opinions even fire away. I am not afraid to answer. Covered the myth, the Canadian identity, we did lots of debunking, or tried to debunk, takes people listening to do so. Yeah. So hold on, I'm gonna go one second here. So from Jason again, if he's still watching. Um, Sorry, one second. Um, just don't want to lose this in the trouble. Why? Uh, no. Why does it seem like no other commander was able to perform at this level? What, you mean Corps Command, Canadian Corps? Because Bing was an excellent commander. Um, 
Yeah, he's an excellent commander. Um, I'm not sure what you mean exactly. Um, they loved Bing. The Canadian, average Canadian soldier loved that man. They, they called themselves Bing's boys. This regular officer in the British Army, upper class. They loved that man. I think a lot of them were sad to see him go when he was promoted. Uh, it's Army Command. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure what you're referring to. Um, but yeah, I love that guy. He just, he had a way about him and he knew what he was doing. I think contributed a lot to that. And he was quite well known for getting out of Gallipoli. <laughs> um, I think that kind of reputation preceded him in a lot of ways. Okay. So this one again, um, about the birth of nation, I don't want to keep harping on it, but. Um, it, it, it's an interesting way of thinking about it, like why some argue it was. I mean, because they see that, that people who were there think that. Excuse me. They see that those were there that think that, and then that's all some people need. I mean, that's a bigger problem, I think, in terms of history generally, is people think those involved in, say, a battle um, didn't, like know more than the rest or, you know, historians who've been studying the primary documents, their opinion means less than someone who was there. I mean, see it all the time, that video on Twitter from uh, our, uh, from Veterans Affairs, sorry, he's talking about, um, um, you know, it's the most important was decisive and that's where Canadians became an, a nation. I mean, some of that comes later. Some of these veterans don't write about that until later. They certainly weren't writing about it at the time, a lot of them. So, and then they believe them. I mean, that, that's not how these things work. Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's an unfortunate way of thinking about this, but that's why some people believe the birth of the nation because um, that's why they believe it. And I don't. So it's hard to like it's hard for me to you know flip it around and say this is why why it was the birth of the nation because people say it was and that's all some people need um, something about you know just because they're on the front line means they can understand what it is for every Canadian to think to be that they're Canadian solely now I, I, I mean it's just it's a murky thing that we don't like to do um, a lot of people get upset about this I don't know why it's a very controversial topic for Canadian a lot of Canadians they get upset about this when you say it's not the birth of a nation and feels like it's belittling the accomplishments done at Vimy and all that other stuff, and I don't really understand it. So hopefully that answers the question there for you, Jason. And I think I covered the birth of the nation stuff pretty well. So yeah, any other questions, please go for it. Yeah, I was there when they were building it, actually. Um, yeah, so I, I never got a chance to go. I went to the Tank Memorial. This place is so cool um, near the Animal Memorial, which I did not cross the road for. Um, and the whole Red Baron thing. Another topic that's gotten me in multiple trouble multiple times. Because <laughs> I said we don't know, and then the owner and people get upset about that too. Why do people get so upset? There, there's my question for you guys. Why do people get so upset about these topics? Why do people get so upset when someone says Vimy isn't the birth of a nation or is the birth of a nation or an Australian shot down the Red Baron, our Canadian shot down the Red Baron 100 plus years ago. Why do people get so upset? I don't, <clears throat> I don't know why people get so upset about these things. Like it just, it doesn't. I don't understand it um, personally. I, I just maybe that's something. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't get it. <clears throat> yeah, the Canadian Corps did not have fewer resources. Um, this is where Korea does come into play. It's not really have anything, but. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, the divisions were bigger. They offered him army command, um, splitting up the Canadian Corps into two corps. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, he said no because he wanted to keep the divisions bigger to have more, you know, more punch uh, on the battlefield. And that's why they broke up the fifth division, and a whole other political reason doesn't really affect today. Um, yes, they're bigger. It wasn't less resources. And Bing was British. Yes, I don't. <clears throat> Excuse me, what is going on? Yeah, I don't think that's a fair statement to say British French commanders weren't as good as the Canadian ones. There were some excellent ones. Uh, then bad ones too. Uh, there's bad Canadians too. Um, I mean, David Watson as a divisional commander wasn't very good. Um, Sam Hughes, Jesus. <laughs> Garnet Hughes, not that great either. <clears throat> there's lots of bad Canadians too. Or mediocre and good. 
it runs the gambit no matter what. It's not based on nationality. Never is. Um, there's terrible people and good people under all groups. So yeah, that, that's kind of an old myth about the First World War more generally. Yeah, I mean, I think I agree from what I've seen <clears throat> about my question there of why people get so upset. Because people don't like having their beliefs challenged. Um, and, and yeah, they per take it personally. I don't understand that all either. Like, you did not shoot down the Red Baron, or you did. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's, it's not, what? It's like, it's not personal. You didn't do it, right? It doesn't change your life, right? If a Canadian shot down the Red Baron or an Australian did, it doesn't change anything. <clears throat> he still got shot down and got killed. That result was still the same. Just, you know, doesn't matter who fired the bullet. That may or may not have been the thing that took him out. Doesn't make a difference. So, I mean, it's things like that. The Vimy thing is bigger because Canadian identity is, can be tenuous, um, to be completely honest with you. We don't, I said earlier, <clears throat> we don't understand what it is to be Canadian. Um, we don't really have a definition for that. We don't have a way of defining that. It's 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 interesting. Sorry, one second. <clears throat> Been talking too much. Um, yeah, I mean, toppling opinions. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm sorry, everyone. Um, yeah, people don't like that. Well, they don't think they're opinions, right? They they think they're fact. And they don't like being told that they're wrong. A lot of people just don't like being told they're wrong, generally speaking. I see it all the time. Unfortunate for me. <laughs> He's dead anyway. Yeah. I made that point in a, in a very in a short on the channel, actually, about Michael Whitman, and some people didn't like that. <laughs> I mean, He's dead. Who cares? You know, it doesn't really matter. Dead is dead. Um, debate later, but, he, you know, one less tiger tank was gone on the battlefields of Normandy. Who cares? Um, same with the Red Baron. He was gone. Killed a lot of uh, not a lot of allied Canadians too. Killed a lot of allied flyers. He was gone. He got killed. He was gone. That's all that matters at the end of the day. Yeah. So it, it's really interesting. Um, myths are powerful. I agree, Mike. Um, thanks again for joining us. Uh, they're very powerful, and this is why I think doing these Vimy live streams and talking about Vimy and the videos and stuff is it's it's a very much an uphill climb, and I don't know if it's something that'll ever bear any fruit. To be honest with you. I don't know. I'm trying. Um, again, like I like to say, I'm just one person. It's not a pity party, but I am just one person. Um, it's hard to do that, to change these myths that have been ingrained for literally decades, um, over 100 years in some cases. It's uh, <clears throat> it, it's uh, it, it's it's difficult to say. People make identity out of these things, and they think it's personal, and they get upset. It turns into a whole other thing. So yeah, it's 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 uh it's unfortunate. I think Vimy is very much one of these. I'm gonna take that off. It's starting to bug me. Um, it's one of them, right? That they think it's Canada somehow. And I think I guess I didn't really cover this earlier, but people think that Vimy, the park, is Canada. They think that patch of land is Canadian sovereign territory. Never has been, and I don't think ever will be. Why would the French, who lose millions trying to eject someone from their land, just give away a patch of land as a sovereign part of their country? That doesn't make any sense, right? It's owned by the government of Canada. They own the land. doesn't make it Canadian soil. People love repeating that. They, they think that they were the French were so happy that the Canadians took Vimy Ridge that it's now Canada. I'm like, no, it's it, instead of Bob Smith owning the land, it's the government of Canada. It, it's not the same thing. It's not like you need a passport to get on that chunk of land. It's not, there's no change in territoriality. There's no the French laws don't apply anymore. Like that's just, it's a bit ludicrous to be honest, that this myth is so powerful and goes to places like that, that they say it's Canada now. And I'm just like, that doesn't even make any logical sense. It just, I don't know where, where people get that from. I mean, yes, the French gifted the land to the government of Canada for a memorial. And that's what it is. I mean, the land was useless. 
couldn't use it again. So here you go. Um, cause it was so stricken with ordinance cause it'd been fought over for four, three years to win a bit. Um, it's just, it's just so full of ordinance. It wasn't useful for anything else. So here you go. You clean it, <laughs> but you know, here's a gift. That's a mess. I mean, that's one of the reasons why the memorial took so long is, A, well, Walter Allward, the designer, was also put in charge as the architect when he shouldn't have been because he wasn't an architect. He didn't know what he was doing uh, in that regard. Um, and he kept changing his mind about everything. I mean, I, I've looked into this. Um, um, and uh, it took forever because they had to clean it because the, the base of that structure needed to be dug out and because it's a battlefield, they're finding bodies and unexploded ordnance and dugouts had to be filled in and it took forever. And then there's other reasons why it took forever. Money ran out and that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, maybe I can talk about that real quick. But uh, so this is interesting. So someone, um, um, that's funny because at the time of the unveiling, all of that land is covered in people. I know things shift and things come to the surface, and I get that. But clearly that hasn't always been a concern. <laughs> <clears throat> you can walk everywhere before yeah, Paul just said it. <clears throat> yeah, uh, you could walk anywhere. I mean, the photos from the... Um, um, the, the dedication of the memorial in 36. People everywhere. There's thousands of people there. If that didn't set it off, I don't know what it would. I know things shift, but they shift because the soil gets tilled for the farmers. That's why the iron harvest is a thing. It doesn't happen um, um, uh, on its own. So it, it is, yeah, it was a fairly recent thing. They don't let you on and they let the goats. I wish there were goats because I like goats better than sheep. I don't know why. I just do. I think goats are hilarious and sheep are kind of boring. And that is probably information you didn't want to know about me, but now you do. Do with it what you will. Um, yeah, the sheep are everywhere. They move them around and they go to different parts and things like that. But uh, yeah, everyone loves the sheep. Someone already posted a picture for me today of the sheep. And when I went there, everyone loved the sheep. Everyone loved taking pictures of the sheep with the sheep, selfies with the sheep, you know, sheep in the background. It's like its own Vimy thing, like the Vimy sheep. Be like a hat or a shirt or something, or you can have like plushes of the Vimy sheep. <laughs> People would probably buy them. Um, no, it's it, it, it's not. I don't know if it's technically part of the red zone. I don't know. Paul would know probably better. Paul definitely knows better than I do. I, but the parts are unoccupied, but it's owned by the government of Canada now. So. They tell people to stay away because um, they just don't want people messing around in there anyway. So people do dumb things and mess with the land and go souvenir hunting and treasure hunting. And yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. There you go. Yeah. The red zone no longer exists. That covers it. Yeah. But the government of Canada puts the signs up, says don't go there. Just like uh, what Robin and Paul were discussing earlier. Yeah. I don't think so. Sorry. Any sheep ever been blown up there? I, I don't think so. I mean, again, that's this sounds probably horrible, but I, I think that would be funny. It's like that Johnny Car Carson, what was it, the Great Karnak or whatever? That's well before my time, but with the sis boom ba, you know, the sheep exploding. <laughs> Sorry, that's uh, it's probably a bit morbid, but uh, I just thought that would be funny. All of a sudden, a sheep just explodes. Um... <laughs> Click like boom ba. I thought it was sis boom ba, like that's like the 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 thing. Oh, God, this cord that you like. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I could, Jason, but it's like stitched in. It ain't coming off. It's not like a patch. But yeah, I could put a sheep on there. I could put a sheep over it. <laughs> the Vimy sheep. There we go. We got it. We have a bestseller with the, with the hat. I don't know. People love the sheep. I don't know why. Yeah. Um, sorry, I got distracted there. Um, Scott. Yeah. Um, okay. The property may be treated like an embassy, which is considered the territory of the country occupying it, but it's not. That's a thing. It's not. Uh, yeah, I understand what you're talking about, Like, but that's diplomatic. Maybe that's for a whole other thing. This is just land owned by the government of Canada. Um, perfect example, Bone Mon and Mel. No one ever says that, right? It's owned, or now government of Canada, but it was owned by the, the Dominion of Newfoundland. No one ever said it was, you know, Newfoundland territory. I've never seen that, but Vimy all the time. Still today, people think it's Canadian territory and they go, no, it's not. So there's this little enclave of Canada in the middle of France. No, 
it, and it's not it's not for the diplomatic reasons right you just arrest people you don't like when you're dealing with politics it's, <laughs> why diplomatic these things exist it's it's not that it's it's just another piece of land the owner happens to be the government of canada Now I'm kind of disappointed it's not goats because goats also do a better job of keeping everything down because they eat a lot. <laughs> okay, we're on a tangent. Um, okay, yeah, so um, I would like to do merch. I don't know if people would be interested in that. I don't know. I don't know if I have a big enough following for merch, and I don't really know how to do it. I haven't really looked into it. Um, but yeah, merch would be cool. I think maybe starting small might be a good idea. Um, like really little things like stickers and stuff like that might be kind of cool. Also to give out for like patrons and YouTube channel members and things like that. I'd like to do that just generally. Um, but yeah, if you guys want it, let me know in any forum. Um, yeah. Oh, really? You saw you were somewhere? So they were there when that happened? Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, unfortunately, someone was killed by uh, unexplored ordinance there not that long ago. Unfortunately, doing some work on the, I think it was the bathrooms or one of the, the old part of the visitor center and got, uh, was killed. So these things do happen, unfortunately. Set off the ordinance? I don't know. Can I kick it? I don't know. Sheep aren't very smart, are they? Or they hit it accidentally. <clears throat> so how would you view this battle in comparison to those of the last 100 days? Tactics, planning, execution politics. Um, they're different in a lot of ways. I don't think it's similar in, in the same aspect. The tactics are completely different in many ways. Uh, like preliminary bombardments are gone. Um you know, counter battery warfare is down to almost an art by the time of the 100 days, and they just gas the hell out of them. So the gunners can't use them. It's all about speed. It's all about, you know, bite and hold and uh, the leapfrogging, uh, particularly like Canal de Nord and smashing their way through the, the, the Hindenburg line, that kind of stuff. Um, execution. I mean, the casualties are higher in 100 days for the Canadians, especially. A good way of thinking about this. And when I taught the course, um, um, <clears throat> I taught a course on the First World War, and that was one of the things I, I, I wanted people to realize is there's a reason why trench warfare developed. It wasn't just because they were inept and didn't know how to advance. They were getting slaughtered, and your instinct is to get down. What do you do? You get down, you dig. That's what you're trained to do. Still are. And get down and get hiding. Once the open, you know, the open warfare of the 100 days comes up with semi open, because um, there's bits and spurts, right? Because of the Hindenburg line is open warfare it's more dangerous because there's nowhere to go there's all this stuff literally flying around and uh you're gonna get hit so the casualties go up um yeah it's it's a whole other ball game basically i mean there are set piece battles in here um, there are set piece battles as part of canada's hundred days um they're not like this they're not a vimy like i said canal de nord um is not is a set piece but not like this um, it's just it's not the same um not even close there's planning and there's a bombardment at the time well it's a, like it's a rolling bombardment uh, there's machine gun barrages definitely can the norm and, and things like that and they use some gas to hit the german guns and hitting strategic points and not just blowing the whole front to hell like they did at vimy so it's very different the politics are also very different like i already mentioned um sorry where did we go uh -huh. politics politics are different because it's it's happening more it's happening more quickly there's not all this time to sit around to think about it and then after the effects right because 100 days kind of catches allied command and everyone off guard um because it just happens so fast at home there's not much going on conscription's already in place in canada the conscripts are what keep the canadian corps going to a degree uh, again that's still up for debate depending on uh, what records you look at and how you look at it. I mean, I do think conscription plays a vital role in keeping the Canadian court in the field in uh, in the 100 days, particularly up to the end. Is that good for the average Canadian soldier? No, because of our casualties. However, they play a massive role in crushing the German army on the Western Front. Um, so that's different. Like, this is occupying a set objective, 
holding it. 100 days is let's get this thing over with and get home um, and end this damn thing. And, and that is what it was. Uh, not Imperial HQ, uh, Army Command, because um, they move through different armies, um, first and third. Fourth, sorry, fourth at MN, sorry. Everyone don't yell at me. Um, but because Horn, Henry Horn, commander, first army, and Curry got along, and Canadian Corps had been successful. Um, they, they, they're the spear point, same with the Australians, until the Australians can't keep fighting. They lose out because of the numbers of uh, casualties. They can't keep up because they don't have conscription like uh, Britain and Canada did. Um, so they couldn't keep themselves in the field. So that's also why the Canadian Corps is at the front. And plus, Curry was okay to hard drive. He wanted to end this thing. And he took those orders and he followed them. He just kept a pushing. Yeah. Yeah, interesting point, Paul, setting them off. Um, I don't know when they get really old. Well, I guess, yeah, it's not set off by weights all the time, right? Knocking a fuse or whatever. Well, landmines especially. Um I don't know. I just hear horror stories with that stuff, right? Grenades blowing people's hands off, and then again, that's people being dumb. Anyway, uh, I hope I was answered all of your questions. I hope this was informative. Um, yeah, I mean, I understand both. Yes, there's nothing setting it off, but ordnance degrades over time and becomes extremely dangerous because of corrosion. Just the stories you hear is. is frightening don't touch that stuff if it's still intact don't touch it might not end well for you uh anyway so if this is uh you discovered the channel because of today please subscribe and like the video i've linked a bunch of stuff down below uh that you can check out if you still have questions please do post them i will get i will answer them uh but you have to sign up shortly um but if you are new please subscribe it helps me uh, views help views especially i need more views right now to keep the channel gaining momentum because the numbers are starting to go down, unfortunately, which is not good. That's not a good sign. Um, it might not be good for the channel overall that the numbers are going down. Um, so I'm a bit worried, to be honest with you, that my numbers are going down. Um, uh, however, yeah, so if you like it, check it out. All the other stuff, a bunch of videos linked down below. There's a baby playlist. If you haven't seen Dave Grip's dad's appearance from Wednesday night, <laughs> I keep thinking today is Saturday. It's Friday. Um, check that out. He knows this stuff. He's been working on this for a long time, and that book is fantastic. It's linked down below as well. If you can get it, and you can help the channel and help Dave and help all of us. It's a good one. Um, so, yeah, check out all that stuff. There's a video coming out tomorrow morning, Eastern time, North American Eastern time, uh, with an animated map. I had it on the channel a long time ago. Actually, I think it was the first video I ever posted. I took it down because it didn't have enough what they saw original contribution from me, excuse me, to get that monetization that you need on YouTube to make any money. I took it down because they, they said it was one that didn't fit the, enough contribution. So I've added my own take into it and added some other stuff into it. So hopefully you enjoy it. It's a really, really interesting piece of footage. It's, it's got footage mixed in with it that I've added it out and put it in together, just the map. It's an animated map that's literally done by hands, like stop motion. Um, except it's not like creatures. It's like barrages and trenches and tropes like represented by symbols and things like that. It's fascinating. And it's of the period. I think it's from 1919 as far as I can tell. I can't find the information because Library Archives Canada didn't link it. And you can't access that file online because, uh, because of course not. Anyway, that's a rant. Uh, but that's coming out tomorrow. Check that out. Um, if you aren't already, please consider becoming a YouTube channel member. A few dollars a month makes a big deal, as does on Patreon. You can do that through the join button here on YouTube and the Patreon links down below. My patrons and YouTube channel members get early access to everything, videos and more insights to what I'm doing. I'm starting to do more exclusive content, particularly because of the censorship stuff going on. On YouTube, it's not new. It's just like they, they've been really cracking down on things like violence. So like anything, like literally anything, like dead bodies and coffins have been tagged as being inappropriate and will demonetize you. So things like that I share with um, my patrons and the YouTube channel members because I don't get flagged for anything like that. So yeah, so so check out all that if, if you want to consider helping the channel. Um, views are huge for me. If you can 
recommend the channel to other people and share it, it does a big thing so uh other than that thank you all for coming i hope you learned something from this and hopefully it wasn't too much incoherent rambling <laughs> so thanks again everyone uh and i will keep everybody up to date through social media and here as well through posts for the community on what's coming up next oh thank you again for another super chat that's, uh, that's very very kind of you you know, you're already a channel member. <laughs> I, I do appreciate it. The, the super chats are extremely helpful to keep things going. Um, really, really help me because I have some expenses coming up that are channel related. Um, StreamYard being one of them that I use for these. So yeah, everyone have a good uh, Easter weekend and um, Passover if you're also uh, celebrating. So I don't think celebrating is the right word. Sorry, I'm starting to get tired. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah. Um, Thank you, Scott. Um, again, thank you again for the super chats. If you're here, Marks and Sparks still, thank you. That was incredibly generous. Thank you so much. And thank you for this. Um, and thank you, Barry, for coming out. Um, thank you, everyone. So yeah, if you're new to the channel, please again, uh, keep in touch and follow along and subscribe because I do live streams all the time. Oh, that's another thing I want to talk about. Sorry, really quick. I want to start doing regular like AMAs. Um, so keep an eye on that. I'm going to try to start you know, getting those regularly scheduled so you know when they're coming, like pick a date and that's when they'll be. It's just things are starting to settle down finally so I can start to do that. So keep an eye on that. So other than that, uh, again, thank you for the super chats. You both are very generous and along with all my YouTube channel members, patrons, thank you so much. And I will see everyone next time. Thanks again. And check out the other videos if you haven't seen them yet. And I will see you all next time and have a good long weekend, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs>